استخدم العالم بافلوف العديد من المثيرات المحايدة لصوت الجرس والضوء وغيرها من المثيرات الأخرى وذلك بإشراطها بمثيرات طبيعية معينة ومن أشهر تجاربه في هذا الشأن أن قدم كلبا جائعا وقدم له صوت الجرس كمثير محايد فلاحظ عدم استجابة الكلب لهذا المثير وفي المرحلة الثانية من التجربة قدم صوت الجرس وأتبعه بالطعام المثير الطبيعي أو غير الشرطي وكانت النتيجة أن استجاب الكلب لذلك بسيلان اللعاب استجابة طبيعية كرر هذه العملية وكان يتبع صوت الجرس بالطعام لعدة مرات وبذلك أصبح الكلب يستجيب بسيلان اللعاب بمجرد سماع صوت الجرس وبهذا أصبح صوت الجرس مثيرا شرطيا قادرا على إحداث الاستجابة التي يحدثها المثير الطبيعي He rerouted the saliva ducts to the outside of his dog's cheek so that he could collect and measure the spittle. Perhaps, he thought, the production of saliva might be the result of a fixed nervous reflex, like a knee jerk. Yes, me notes. So, great After taking many measurements of spittle, He confirmed that the dogs drooled automatically when their tongues touched food. He called the response the salivation reflex. But his work started to run into trouble. As his dogs became familiar with the experimental routine, They started to fill their cheek tubes before Pavlov had a chance to stimulate their tongues. The dogs were learning to anticipate food. Pavlov tried a new technique. He erected screens so that the dogs couldn't see what was going on. Before passing meat through the hatch, he introduced a stimulus that was totally unrelated to feeding. A ticking metronome. First, the dog dripped saliva into its cheek tube only when the food appeared. But after a number of trials, the dog began to connect the ticking with the arrival of meat. Soon the sound alone made the dog drool. Eventually, the dog salivated as much to the ticking itself as it did originally to the presentation of food. Palmer, it is to that. Hmm? Stagulail. He called this new response the conditioned reflex. Walker. 